commanding a standing success through love. Commanding a standing success through love. Our key scripture is 1 Corinthians 13. If you want to know the summary of love, you go to 1 Corinthians 13. Is that true? In verse 8, it says, Love never fails. The New King James Version. And verse 13, verse 8 said, But whether they are prophecies, they will fail. Whether they are tongues, they will cease. Whether they are, and there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Verse 13 said, Now abide faith, hope, love. This three, but the greatest of these is love. There are three forces that rule destiny. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these three is love. When you are in love, you are in God. And God is in you. When you are in love, you are what? In God, and God is in you. So when you are confronted, it is God in you and the God outside that is being confronted. Because love makes you to carry God. So whatever confronts you is confronting God. And nothing can confront God and survive. So whatever is confronting you will bow right now in the name of Jesus. Because when God is in you and out, believe you me, the manifestation of his presence delivers instant results. Why? God is love. From 1 John 4, 8. Is that true? God is love. And two cannot walk together except they be agreed. So until you walk in love, God can walk with you. So if God has to walk with you, you have to walk in love. And if God be for you, Romans 8, 31, who can be against you? So when you walk in love, you don't pray against witches, which is wrong. Because they can't be against you. Every devil that wants to torment your life will be destroyed as a walk in love. <laughs> Hear this truth. Love is in degrees. Just like faith. Love, yesterday we said it's not static. Love grows. Love what? what? While studying, I got a deep understanding of God's word. You know, if you read Galatians 5 and it just, it said, be in the spirit. Have you ever read when it was talking about the fruit of the spirit? Now, it said the loss of the flesh, are adultery, he mentioned them, and he said, be in the spirit. Before he said, the fruit of the spirit is this and this and this. Now, when Paul was speaking, be in the spirit, the first thing that will come to you is a pious look. True? Hmm? So it will be in the spirit. That's not true. It was talking about be in the spirit, grow in the fruit of the spirit. It's not something like, no, no, no. He's saying grow in love, grow in all the fruits of what? The spirit. Don't remain where you were. Grow, be in the spirit. Don't allow your flesh to rule you. Be in the spirit. You refuse to be carnal, but walk by the spirit of God. So not that be in the spirit, but, no, it's not what Paul was talking about. Saying you grow in the spirit, in the fruit of the spirit. Now, Jesus was talking to a man called Peter in John 21, 15 to 17. He said to him, he said, Peter, do you really love me? Peter said, yes, of course I love you. He said, feed my lambs. He said, okay, do you love me? I want to know whether your love has grown. He said, feed my sheep. And he came again and said, love us that me, Peter. He said, yes, you know I love you. He's asking, look, are you sure the love you have for me has grown or you are still on that level? That is it. To tell you how love is powerful. He said, look, do you really love me, Peter? If you love me, then why are you fishing? Go and do what I said to you. He said, I want to know whether your love has grown. He said, yes, if you love me, go back to what I call you to do. So, love is not static. Love is dynamic and love grows. Is that clear, sir? There are things you had love for before they have died naturally, true? Are you going to have now? Some of you before now love to go to nine club. Do you still love it? No, your love for God has made nine club to die. So I hear. 
So the hotter your love for God and his word, the stronger the manifestation of his presence with you. You get greater command when you are in love with God. Let me say this to you. We are in a love race. We are what? On your marks. Those who love him more will manifest more. And those who love him less will manifest less. So, the hotter your love for God, the higher your placement in life. There's nothing unique about any man. It is his understanding of God that enhances his placement on earth. There's no special person. It's your understanding that makes you different from other people. Is that clear, sir? So, all I need to do is to accept spiritual responsibility to prove my love for God. And the love of God will always manifest itself in your actions. If you love God, your actions will show. Your actions what? It will show. So I hear. Love. How do I command a standing success through what? Everybody wants to be successful. Is anybody wants to be a failure? Don't you know that when you are successful, you have many relations. And when you're a failure, you're an orphan. Success has many brothers. Failures have what? The orphans. The greatest book to have ever been written on earth is the Bible. Success book. The greatest book ever written on success is the Bible. There's no success book on earth that can match this world. Its principles and values are transgenerational. What worked for Abraham will still work today. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest us out to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way, what? Prosperous. And then thou shalt have, what? Good success. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. If you look at that scripture, it shows that the responsibility of success lies with you and I. This book of the law shall not depart out of where? Did he mention God there? No. But that shall be the day and day and night. Who's responsibility? You. That that means us have to do according to all that is written in the island. We again? You. And then that shall make that way what? And then that shall have good success. So prosperity and success is determined by you and I. So what you and I have to do is to tell God to show you from his word what is my responsibility? What, is, what do I need to do to come out of frustration into celebration and from stagnation into breakthroughs and to turn my trials into triumph? What do I need? to? That, that should be our what? Respond. Now hear this. When God called me to ministry, I went to Bible school and the bishop taught us prosperity. Now, after teaching us, I was to start ministry, I came under pressure, severe pressure. Pressure because physical cash was not there to start. The pressure was so much so, I know a man I prayed for who was doing well. So I went to him in Sulere and I said, I'm to go to Port Harcourt and things are somehow. You know, you know what I was telling him? You should know what I was telling him. It's very well. It's tough. He said, Pastor, you know, my business has not, has not progressed. He talked, 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 talked. At the end of the day, the talk did not produce anything. So when I came back, I said, I've not known this thing. If I've known it, I won't go to this man. I was sincere to myself. I said, I have not discovered the truth of kingdom wealth. Under pressure, I want someone to assist me. So I, I, I dropped all the things I was taught. I said, I must get personal revelation of kingdom wealth. I finished Bible school. So I went back, picked the book, which he said he read. Pick his own book alongside. And I shut the door. I said, give me seven days. Let me know the secret of kingdom wealth. And I ate the book by Claudia Copeland and his own book, Breaking Financial Hardship. 
And after their light came, bah, bah, bah. And I called my wife. I said, listen, we can never be poor. No devil can make us poor. I had to accept responsibility to locate what it takes to prosper. Do you understand now? So, do you want to be successful? There's something you need to know beyond what anybody just tell you on the streets to bring out of failure. And I'm going to share it with you. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So, why do you need biblical principles? Is it my ways? Why do I need biblical what? To succeed. Because <laughs> principles are everywhere now. Today on the streets, you see a manner of books. In Isaiah 55, verse 8, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways, your ways, say the Lord. <laughs> For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your what? Your ways. And Romans 8, verse 2, look at what the Bible says here. It says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So there are laws superior to natural laws. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, there are lots of success stories all over town. You see them everywhere. They'll tell you, save 10%, don't pay tight. There are many theories flying over the whole places. Is that true? That even Christians are confused. There are so many theories flying. Save 10% of your income. Instead of giving it to God, increase it. 17 years, you get this amount. So somebody leaves tight. He says, tight is not important. So he saves this 10% and after that, he crashes. So, so many principles are everywhere. So we need to understand God. So you know why? They say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities and powers. And in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3, hear what he says here. <laughs> the Bible says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Human theories can't deal with spiritual challenges. Israel fulfilled all principles of human theories. They were hard working in Egypt. They were workaholics through, yet they were held bound by the gods of Egypt. Is that clear, sir? If it's principle alone, they fulfill all principles of natural laws. They were working as slaves more than anybody. Yeah, they were not successful. And biblical laws can be likened to the rod of Aaron. We swallow the rods of Pharaoh. In Exodus 7, 10 to 12. There are certain laws now operating in town. The law of hard work, the law of this one. Yes, they are good. But if you don't understand the foundational law in Christ, you will still suffer. Because if you operate without only those laws and principles, without having a foundational law, the force of darkness will still humiliate you. That's why Christians will walk and walk and walk. Most times they have nothing to show for them because they just read secular books, just believe in those laws and don't know the foundational law in Christianity. I pray today your eyes will be open. So what is the foundational law for standing success in the kingdom of God? What is the foundational law for outstanding success in the kingdom of God? What is it? We need to find out. Because if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? For no other foundation can any man less say that which is laid by Christ Jesus. The foundational law is found in Matthew chapter 10, 22, 36 to 40. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, to you too, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Shout hallelujah. The love of God in the heart of men 
is the anchor law of success. That is what makes it foundational. And except <laughs> if this foundation is not there, Psalm 11 verse 3, forget it. Anything you do, you're wasting your time. Know all the principles. This is the anchor law of success. You are not trying to use God. You are trying to love God. <laughs> Many want to use God. They don't love God. Oh God, I've come now. Give me this. Give me. No single love. So they struggle in the church. They sweep church. They clean church. They sing church. They do everything. Nothing works. The foundation law for a standing success is to love him. So here. Is that clear, sir? Every true lover of God is a global phenomenon in the making. And you'll be with the next one in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Our Sunday's success is our heritage in Christ. <laughs> but it's only for the anointed, selfless, and all the self lovers of Christ. The things you are looking for, they are right before you. Just make the right choice by loving him. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything you're looking for shall be added unto you. So your greatest asset should be your heart for God. Should be what? Your heart for God. Shout hallelujah. With a heart for God, you make a mark on the earth. Outstanding success is your birthright, no doubt. But the love of God is the gateway to express the fullness of it. I'm going to give you some scriptural examples of lovers of God who succeeded in the Bible with us with some of them. Because if you look at the example of someone, you can know that if you do that way, you shall also succeed. Is that clear? These people love God and they did not struggle, they just succeeded. I'm going to give you examples in the Bible. And I give one example of contemporary time a man who was not in scriptural time, but in his own time succeeded with the love of God. So here. This is the foundation. The foundation is not all those principles you're working in. If, if the love of God is not in the foundation, every other principle will not stand in success. You can work hard. You can be working like Jackie. That's not what, where the thing is. First person is Joseph. Is who? A is Joseph. A is Joseph. Joseph was a prisoner. Who ended up a prime minister in spite of challenges. He loved God. Because without love, you can't fear God. Say, I fear God if I do this. The doors of destiny can never be closed against a lover of God. A true lover of Jesus will ever emerge the high flyer. The eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Next they enter the heart of the man, what God has prepared for them that what? Love him. First Corinthians 2, verse 9. Now, look at the man Joseph in Genesis chapter 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in the virtues of fine linen and put a goat in about what? His neck. And Joseph, who was a slave, previous night was a prisoner, ex convict, accused of rape. Never qualified to be anything. Listen, if you know Joseph's story, he was accused of what? Rape. As prisoner, a slave, all natural laws was against him. But his only credential was he loved God. He feared God. If Joseph can move from prison to the palace in 24 hours, has God changed? In the name of Jesus, somebody who nobody record with, your position and level will change now. I speak over someone's destiny. In 24 hours, your position, your situation, will turn in the name of Jesus. In the palace of your nation, you be remembered as I'm talking right now. Amen. If you're a believer, say amen like a believer. Amen. His credential was love. Now, 
Look at the man David. David. A man after God's heart. He became a national hero at the age of 17. He was challenged, but he emerged on the topmost top. David, nobody reckoned with David. Even in his father's house, they didn't give him space. When they were calling for those to be, he, he was not, his name was not mentioned to tell you how they, they despised him. They did not even remember him. Even the prophet Samuel did not know that there was someone like that. He saw those with parading chest. David was nobody nowhere to be reckoned with. He was in the bush. I don't know where men have despised you. Though. Your announcement is coming from this meeting. In Acts 13 verse 22. He said, and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. To whom also he gave their testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who shall fulfill all my will. This day, everyone that key into the love of God, that men are pushed aside and don't care for you, after this meeting, you will be announced in the name of Jesus. <laughs> David emerged as a ruler based on one condition, a man after God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at the man Job. See Job. Job was a lover of God. <laughs> he became Job the business king. He said he was the greatest man in all the East. Job chapter 1 verse 3. He was the, just like you have the, today the rich men of the world. Now, this is where Christians miss it. How come before now, the people who knew God were the greatest? How come sinners are the greatest? So their principles can't work. Listen, listen carefully. This is Christians Before now, nowhere did any sinner was the richest. But Christians have lived our foundational principle to follow their principles. So it's not working. Today, Christians are no longer the leaders in wealth. Because we are following the human principles. It can't work like that. God said, in my ways are not your ways. You want my own to work? Go to the foundation. That's why church people miss it. You want to work with the principles of the world? you can never get outstanding results. They don't know God, so they can work with their own principles. You should go to your own principle. Are you going to say now? If this foundation is not there, church will never take over. Just read all the books, artificial intelligence, read everything. If this one is not there, the artificial, you'll, be, you'll be artificial in their midst. All those things will only work when this one is at the foundation. I mean, understand where I'm going. If this is not there, read every book of success. It won't work. They will beat your hands down. Look at the man Job. He was the greatest of all men in the business world of his days. And hear what Job said. <laughs> in Job 13 verse 15, he said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. He said, I will let go anything except God. That was what he was saying. He said, no matter what happens to me, I will not let go God. I love him to that point. A true heart for God qualifies you to make a great mark on the earth. Job was the greatest man in all what? The east can be likened to the west today. I'm speaking to someone's destiny. The greatest people will emerge as they go back to the roof in the name of Jesus. The next one, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were lovers of God. They became rulers in a strange land. In Daniel chapter 2, 48 and 49. Look at what the Bible says. And the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts. You may suffer for a while, but just go to the foundation. You know, Daniel didn't find it easy. You may go through some challenges in your office, but don't give up. Put God first. You still will match at the top. If you watch all of them, they went to challenges. Now you're going to challenges, does not mean you're a bad man. Listen, all the names I mentioned, they went to challenges. 
Then you're going through some challenges does not mean you will give up your foundational truth. Are you going to say now? No, 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 no. Sometimes you go through challenges not because you committed. What sin did Joseph commit? What sin did Job commit? What sin did Daniel commit? They didn't commit any sin. They committed nothing. But they, they, you may be going through challenges, but just calm down. Don't give up. Very soon, the wall will bow at your feet. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of where? And the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel requested, you know when they made him, he now requested of the king. To, and he said, Shedak, he said, these are my own brothers. Put them in office. And he said, Shedak, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. He was the chief of staff. Was what? The chief of staff. Today. <laughs> As you go to this foundation, the same heart that God has anointed, and when I speak, the sick get healed. I declare, the next election coming in Nigeria, church people will take over. In the political sector, in the economic sector, I decree, church people will take over now. I speak as a prophet of God. You will be among them in the name of Jesus. Just go to the foundation. Go to what? Another example outside of scriptural times, because we have given scriptural examples, four of them. Outside scriptural, his name is called John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller. He was the richest man in the world in his own time. He was the first acknowledged American billionaire. He was a devout, not Baptist. And supported many church-based institutions. He was an addicted giver. Whose principle was based on Luke 6.38. Now hear this and hear me well. This man taught in Sunday school. He taught the what? A multi... Listen, the richest man is time to teach in Sunday school. Sunday school. He will come late today. He was a sexton. Sexton is... Today, what we call sanctuary keepers. He will open the church and close the church. So he comes first, goes last. The first, he was, he was the richest, cuckoo him. They said in the east of America, they regarded him as the most richest and the wealthiest of all generations. If he's today, oh, <laughs> he will come to church late. Then he said, is there no seat for me? May not sit. Not sit for me here. The wealthiest man on earth. It was a set. He was opening doors and closed the what? Of the church. Confess. Close last. <laughs> now hear what he said. And I quote. It was a lover of God. He said. I will quote him. There is nothing in this world that can compare with the Christian fellowship. Nothing that can satisfy but Christ, unquote. He <laughs> said, there's nothing in this world that can compare with the Christian fellowship. This is a wealthy man said, there's nothing that can be compared with Christian wealth. Nothing can satisfy but Christ, unquote. Well, we read in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, he said, love never So the love of God is immune to failure. It is failure proof. That's why all these men have mentioned because they love him, they could not fail. You will not fail again. Yeah. So it is the foundational law for outstanding success. That's what I mean. It's the foundational what? Anything you love more than God has placed a limit on your destiny. And it makes you an idolater. Anything you love in this world more than God has placed a limit on your he must be first no second position. No what? Yes, you love your wife, but she will come number two. Yes, you love your children, they will come number two. Yes, you love your family, they will come number two. God must be number one. Mm. Anybody who does not place God first, you have placed a limit on your destiny. 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. For this is the first commandment. So here. So how does love enthrone for standing success? How does it? How does it enthrone you for success? How, how come when you love God and then you are just in charge there? You know what? One is that you imbibe God's nature. You imbibe what? When you love God, you imbibe his nature. Now this is what it is. This is how love enthrones for standing success. This is how it does. First John 4. You know when you read the Bible, understand it. First John 4, 8 and 16. I'm going to dissect it. Listen. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. God is love. Is that true? Listen, please. I want you to. God is what? God is what? If I say, and we have known and believed that the love of God had for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. And God is the king of all the earth. So when I walk in love, anywhere I go to on the earth, I take charge. Get it clear? That's, you imbibe his nature without sweat. Now listen, I want to tell you my secret. Fast, you won't get it. My greatest secret is love. When you walk in love, you dwell in God and God in you. So, and God is the king of all the earth. So when a man walks in love, he carries royalty. So you imbibe royalty wherever you go. Let's say, people walk in love, they don't beg, recognize me. They must recognize you. He that walketh in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So when I walk in love, God dwells in me and I dwell in God. And he is the king of the earth. True? So, if God is the king of the earth and I walk in love, means I carry him in personality. So when I move, royalty announces without sweat. And anywhere I step into, I imbibe the nature of God. God cannot be harassed. God cannot be told, get out. God cannot be told, we look down on you. So when you enter anywhere, the way they will respect God, that's how they will respect you. So it is not your fasting, it's your love nature. I may not understand it. I went somewhere some days ago with my family. The moment I entered the environment, the environment changed. The, the environment physically changed. It's a place where every Nigerian will want to go with respect. They were calling serving generals, calling big, big names. But before they called anybody, that was the first name they called. That you can see the royalty and dignity. All the serving generals had to wait. My name was the first. They said, with your family. And you, with this so much audacity, why I walk in love, so God cannot come a second when he appears anywhere. Do you understand what I'm saying now? I dictated the atmosphere. And I walked out with so much honor and dignity. You don't know what you're missing, walking in hatred. Somebody committed, offended you last year. Do you know there are some people who avoid me even in this church? And I'm their pastor. There are people who avoid me. When I'm coming, they just go like this. <laughs> that is, I'm their pastor. You know they're avoiding me. Even if I offended you, forgive me if I know not what I did. <laughs> but please, just walk in love the way I walk in love. I don't struggle for things to happen. So I hear I'll give you understanding. Second, number two, why love enthrones for a success? Love establishes companionship with God. I told you yesterday. Love what? It establishes companionship with God. <laughs> God is love. Is that true? Can two walk together except they be agreed? In Matthew 3, 3. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So, when I walk in love, God is with me. Is that true? And look at what the Bible says. Now you understand this now. Psalm 24, 7 to 9. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. He said, who is the King of glory? The Lord who is in companionship with you, strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He said, lift up your, 
Lift up your heads, O you gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Now. So an established walk, W-A-L-K, with God, guarantees unlimited breakthroughs. What I mean? When you walk with God, closed doors are open on their own accord. So when you go anywhere, doors just walk. Listen, when you walk in love, doors can't be closed against you. True? True? When you walk in love, when you appear anywhere, doors just lift up. Every door shut against you will open right now. There are those who don't look for dates. They call them and give them dates. And there are those who are looking for days and they say, you come next year. <laughs> when you walk in love, nations open up to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Nations, what? If you don't know what love is, better, better change your lifestyle to love. In fact, change your name. Put love. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> From today, no door will be shut against you. Yeah. When you walk in love, when you walk in what? Doors open. Doors what? They just open. Because lift the, the king of glory. God cannot walk with you except you walk in love. And when he's walking with you, you don't struggle for doors to open. You go anywhere, they say, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Where they saw that, go out, go out. They'll say to you, come in, come in, come in. You don't know what you're missing. Let me say this to you. If you don't walk in love, God can never keep companion with you. God cannot keep company with somebody who does not walk in love. Because his nature is love. So when you walk into that way, he leaves you alone. Hello? Okay. I'm going to be very practical. Two of you are close, young men. Look at his face. Now, frown, frown, frown. Are you comfortable? You are around him. Are you comfortable? Because the nature is putting up. It's not the kind of nature you want. When you walk in bitterness, rancor, every small thing, God will say, carry a while ago. <laughs> I was talking to a young man I love so much. <laughs> I love him so much that I still love my wife. I've not changed. I was talking to him. I said, look, you know what? Whatever it is. What? He said, no, no, no. So for the first time, I said, no, this boy, I'll pray for you. He still need to understand love. <laughs> Are you going to say that? I've not changed my love for him. I still love him. I just say, oh, but this my son has to understand love. If he has 50% of the love I have, it is making us angry. They are not, you know, they are nothing. You know, it is your diary of dynamite. You know, it is I've gone through life. Someone has abused me. Abuse me, oh. Abuse me, oh. <clears throat> you know, abuse has degrees. <laughs> then after abusing me, he now called me that they need hazard. <laughs> and the devil wanted to test whether I understand love. They just told me the thing he said in my ear. He didn't know that they've told me. And then he now called me. He said, Papa, landlord has just thrown my things outside. You know, the first thing I would have said, you would have abused me. Thank you. You go, she pepper, me landlord, make rain, make rain. Let them beat, beat your teeth outside. But I understood more than that. I told him, I said, look, one that there's money there, give it to him to pay his rent. You know why God is lifting me? He think it's, he think, ah, amao. You can sing amao, amao. You can sing amao, nothing will happen amao. You can sing. It's a, it's a, it's a, not it. You can sing all the amao. It's not. People think it's the song that is making up. I'm telling you my secret. It's like, ha, ma, ha, ma, oh. Come and sing it now. <laughs> if it's a song, then the people in the choir should be doing ama, ama. I don't know the one singing the song. It is not the song. Oh. I'm telling you my secret. <laughs> It's not, it's not the song. I'm telling you my secret. I'm out. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So whether you just get carried away and thinking that uh, it's me to I go sing now, you think I will go sing. What are the signs that I love God? What is the signs that I have a heart for God? So here. Can I wake up every morning and I look at my wife? Is it sweet? I 
love you. You know I love you. And then every day, I will not show her no, no sign of the love. Yeah, one day she must not come. This love you are talking about, I've not seen it all. Every, even your brother tells you every day he loves you. Then you go to him, say school fees, he say, no, well, God will help. If it's okay. Things are hard. Then the next day he say, bruh, I want you to help me. My shirts all are torn. Can I get one shirt? He said, God will bless you. He went to his house, he's eating on the table. He said, hold on. It's like food that's finished in the kitchen. He's eating. One day he said, brother, this is your church. Carry and go. <laughs> Every love must be proved. So what are the proofs that you love God? What are the signs? If you don't see these signs, you don't love God. If you truly love God, I'm going to show you some signs. If you truly love God, number one, A, you will love his word. Hmm? You'll be in love with his word, W-O-R-D. If you say, I love him, you will want to love what? His word. Psalm 119, verse 97. Oh, how love I the Lord. It is my meditation all the day. You cannot disobey his word and say you love him. Every time the word of God is told you, and you disobey. Now, for instance, listen. A husband and wife had a problem. And she took the husband to police. And was to go to court. And I said, my daughter, open to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And I said, read. And she read. I said, what did the scripture say? He said, who are you to go before the unrighteous to judge a mother? I said, now, withdraw that case. Because it's not scriptural to go to court for unbelievers to judge us. Don't take your husband to police over a trivial matter. The matter is too trivial. Go and withdraw the case. Now, if you love God, immediately you see that scripture. It's saying, in Jesus' name. But somebody who does not love his word, we say, I don't care. Bible, stay aside. So you don't say you love God when you don't obey his word. If you love God, you will love his word. And to show you love his word, you will obey his word. If you wish, you will stop witchcraft. Because God was saying, somebody to witch. So if you see yourself flying the night, you come and say, please, people pray for me. I don't like this flying. <laughs> but for you to be flying and still be in church, you don't love God. You are enjoying the witchcraft practice. You know, there's a point in church where you know that there are witches and you say, stop this thing. I say, I don't know. <laughs> we have seen this though. You think pastors will tell you everything, won't you run? A lady, the daughter, God used me to deliver the daughter. And the daughter opened it, tell me, told me that, look, my, my mother is a witch. And I called the mother and said, come, since your daughter has openly confessed and shown signs, you to come out now so that you can restore your marriage. <laughs> I love you with you. I love you with you. Your own daughter has confessed openly that you're a witch. And the two of you, you are the one who initiated her. And we are brought her out. <laughs> I don't know which she doesn't love the word of God. Otherwise, that is enough for her to say, Pastor, pray for me. I don't want this nonsense. She's enjoying herself flying and showing wickedness. No, no, some people like it. Okay. You love God? You must love his word. You will love his house. You love what? If coming to a church, you struggle, you don't love God. Those who love God love him. His house. Psalm 84, 1 to 4, 7 and 10. How amiable are the tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longed, yea, even fainted for the cause of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. Verse 4. Blessed are they that dwell in the house. They will be still praising God. Verse 10. He said, for a day in the course is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'd rather be a surgery keeper in the house of God than to be a militant on the street. See, you will promote his kingdom. You will what? Haggai chapter 1, 2 to 8. You will love to promote what? His kingdom. If you love God, promoting his kingdom will not be an a Issue. Can I tell you a testimony? I don't preach what I don't practice. I have told you before. I had some money I kept. 
And the money is not enough for what they told me to do. And I said to them, give me a satellite church. I want to use that money for the satellite church before you continue my project. I told that kid, wait. This money cannot cover the bill you gave to me. So first and foremost, I told him, I said, give me a satellite church. I will use this money for the satellite church to build the satellite church. But I know heaven's models respond. I had said my project should wait. Let me use the money to first build this house. You think I don't love God? They are on my project, too, but I said they should wait. Because my own project can wait. His own cannot wait. When it's not enough, it's a seed. Any seed not enough to solve your problem is a seed. D, you will love souls. You will love what? John 3, 16. You will love souls. Now, we say win souls. You are not interested. You don't love God. Go for Saturday evangelism. You hide. You don't love God. If you love God, you will win souls. For God so loved the world, that whosoever believes in him shall not walk. So you too, tomorrow, to prove that you love God, go, go, win a soul. If you don't win soul, forget it. You don't love God. You don't love God. So win soul for tomorrow's service. Are you hearing me now? You will love your neighbors. You love your wife? Your neighbor is not the man leaving the next door to you. Your neighbor is any mortal man. Is that clear, sir? First John 4, 20, 21. If any man say, I love God and hated his brother, he's a liar. <laughs> For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him, thou he who loveth God, love his brother. Do you love God? Love your brother. There is nobody you cannot love. Let me say this to you. If you can't love your spouse, I wonder who you love again. Listen. He that loveth God must love his brother. If you can't love your spouse you are sleeping with, okay, we go call love now. Okay, I'm not going to talk. We go call love. When some men say, I hate my wife, I say, are you okay in your head? I hate that man. And you sleep. You hate somebody. It's not heavy in your mouth. And you say you love God. You carry Bible come church. He say, if you say you love God and you don't love the man you have seen, how dwell the love of God in you? It's right here. So, a true heart for God is the fundamental requirement for scaling utmost highs in life. From the examples we have read in scriptures, it is very clear. It is very what? It's not clear? That the foundation for outstanding success is what? Love. It's what? It's love. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 7. So the Holy Spirit fires the love of God into our hearts. The spirit of love empowers you to love God. Even when things don't seem to work the way you want them, you still love Him. Is that clear? In fact, the more challenged you are, the hotter your love. When you love God, Car can't move you. Clothes can't move you. Nothing can. He said, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Not even dead can separate you. You can't ask God questions. When you love him. You don't say, God, why do I, do I lose my sister? You still love him. Lord, why would this thing happen? Nobody will lose anybody around us in Jesus' name. But he can't make you to say, I won't come to church, you know. I won't come to church. I won't come to church. I won't come to church because of this way it happened. Nah. Nah. People are, when you love God, those things, you grow above them. You know, there are some people who have not eaten food in the morning, they stop church in the evening. He said, why you not going to church? No food. <laughs> he said, I didn't make you no church. Mm. My motor will break down. May you receive the spirit of love in the name of Jesus. So I receive it. The love of God is already in your heart. Say, Holy Spirit. 
Fire it afresh in me. I want my love for God to come alive. Put a hand on your chest and your heart and pray that prayer in the Holy Ghost and you understand it. I want the love of God to come afresh in my heart. Pray the Holy Ghost and pray you understand the name of Jesus. I want the love of God to come afresh in my heart. Let us say, "Kute bregedi ya kotale gede gezi ya ukwashuda." E breke si zalo kate bregedi ya katala. Holy Spirit, let the love of God come afresh in my heart. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Ghost and the Spirit let it be fire of love on me inside. Oh, go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost fire the love of God afresh in my heart. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name.